guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a murder case that happened in the 70s in Alberta. On April 13th, 1977, in Lindbrook, Alberta, located outside of Tollfield, Alberta, I'll put up a snippet of Google Maps so you can see the location of this town in relation to Edmonton. A couple, the McLeods, were working on their septic tank and they needed a pump for it. They searched an abandoned property that they owned and located the tank there. When they opened the tank, it was full of water and they saw a foot sticking out. The McLeods contacted the RCMP. The RCMP showed up shortly after, drained the tank, and removed a body. The body was taken to Edmonton, Alberta, where an autopsy was completed. So I'll briefly describe what was shown on the autopsy, but if you're not comfortable listening to a description of the crime that took place, I would stop watching at this point. This autopsy showed that this person was shot, this being the cause of death, had been badly beaten, burned multiple times, and their genitals had been mutilated. Limestone, or quick lime, was placed on the body after death to try to cover up what had been done. This person was male, aged 26 to 32 years old, 5 foot 6 inches, had a medium build, was 154 pounds, had brown hair, was right-handed, and was white. He was found wearing a gray t-shirt, blue work shirt, blue jeans, and brown wallaby type shoes. After examining the body, um, it was determined that he may have been a laborer and he may have suffered from an illness at a young age. What this illness was was not described from what the information that I could locate, um, but they believed he may have suffered an illness at about the age of five. Many believe this man was Aboriginal, not white. A million dollars was spent trying to find the identity of the victim and who was responsible for the crime. One of the investigators on the case, since retired, Mr. Lambert, believes the case will never be solved, but also believed that finding the identity of the victim could actually help solve the case. The police nicknamed the victim Septic Tank Sam instead of using John Doe. So if you're looking up this case, if you use the name Septic Tank Sam, that's the easiest way to find out about this case. In the small town, there were many theories surrounding this case. Some thought this was a drug-related crime. Others believed Sam may have been a child molester due to the viciousness of the crime and the fact that the body was sexually mutilated. The police investigated many of the theories and received thousands of tips. They sent dental records to over 800 dentists in Canada, but no matches were made. My theory on this case, um, I have no credentials to even make a theory, but my gut feeling on this case is that this man was Aboriginal and not white, and that this was a race-based crime. That's where my gut goes when I read this information, um, but I only have the information I'm giving to you. So all the information that you have here is exactly what I'm going by, and this is just what my senses tell me. Let me know your thoughts and theories. On this case. There was a facial reconstruction model completed of Sam. I'll show you a photograph here of that model. RCMP Sergeant Jim Warden believes Sam was not a resident of Alberta and that this wasn't a random attack because of how brutal it was. He also believes the suspect could be from the area because they knew of the property and that it was abandoned. Here is a quote from Miss McLeod, the lady who located the body with her husband at the time. Quote, this guy belonged to somebody. Somebody somewhere knows what happened. And to think, if we hadn't gone looking for that pump that day, he may have never been found. End quote. Because of all of the DNA databases that we have now, I feel this case is solvable, especially the identity portion. And like the detective said, that the identity is the first step in moving this case forward and potentially solving it. 
if you had a loved one who went missing during this time, they fit this description, you can actually submit your DNA if you're a blood relative or if you still have that person's DNA, whether it's a lock of hair or whatever you may have, you can submit that as well. You can check out the sources below, but I actually didn't find a whole lot about this case. So if you do have more information about it, please leave a link in the comment section so everyone can check it out. If you know anything about this case, the contact information will be in the description box below. And if you would like to submit a tip anonymously for whatever reason, you can use the Crime Stoppers information below. I truly believe, I know, like, I probably say this about all cases, but I do believe the majority, if not all, of cases are solvable. This one, because of the DNA portion, the fact that we don't know the identity of this person yet, um, but also because it only takes one person. So if the person or persons that committed this crime told anyone, um, that person could come forward, even the person or persons who committed this crime could come forward and confess. So I believe it just takes one person, it just takes the right person to come forward and talk about it. Um, I hope you learned some information about Sam, and again, if you have any, any, any information, even if it's a small detail that you feel like isn't very significant, it may move the case forward, you never know. Thanks for watching. I hope all of you had happy holidays and happy new year 